Hello class, this is the video on how to use factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping is a technique whenever you have an even number of terms in a polynomial or some expression that needs factoring. So we can see right here in this first problem that we are having four different terms and that we should look to see uh, how factoring by grouping might help us here. So the key is to take things two at a time. Now it is possible, and though not in any of the examples that I'm about to do, to have there be three at a time or four at a time, but that would be a really huge problem uh, that would be more difficult that we won't get to in this video. So what we want to do is we want to look at these two terms here in this case and say what is the greatest common factor, the normal question that we ask in factoring. What is the greatest common factor between those two? Well, in terms of numbers, I can definitely take a 6 out, and then what's left? Well, this is 5 times uh, that, and this is 1 times that. And about k's, how many k's can I take out? Well, they both have at least 2, because this one is k to the third, and that one is k squared. So we can at least take out a k squared, and that'll leave us with 5k plus 1. Now over here, you might think there is nothing that you can take out. And from a certain perspective, that's true. But we have to take out something. And I'm trying to pick this particular example to show you what happens when there's quote unquote nothing you can take out. That we can always divide by 1. That factoring out something is kind of like dividing. So I'm going to call this taking out a 1. And in which case, I'm left with still 5k plus 1. And now the tricky part here is to then what do we do once we have that? People get confused and think that somehow this expression is uh, going to have to be repeated in our answer, that this is going to have to happen twice somehow in our answer. But really, this only happens once, that this 5k plus 1 happens once in our answer, and then the two pieces over here, this piece and this piece each happen once. So 6k squared plus 1. But the, the temptation to write the 5k plus 1 twice, because it happened there and happened there, that you should be able to think why that couldn't possibly be the case. If I wrote another expression with k over here, I've got 2k's here, 1k here, I write it again, I'm going to get k to the fourth, and I'm going to make something bigger than my original problem. So that definitely can't be. So you should, you should definitely not th think that that could be possible to include another term in your answer, that this does indeed factor down to this way. Now, if we hadn't gotten the same expression in both parts of the parentheses there, then this wouldn't have been factorable with this technique, and we'd need to go some other way. Now, here's a bigger example of the kind of more complicated thing that could happen with this. But again, we look and we see one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So I'm going to try factoring by grouping. Now, I don't see a pattern here of three and three. And once we're up to six terms, that's something you need to consider. But instead, I do see a pattern if I simply take them two at a time. That in every case, I've got, in terms of the numbers, 2 times 3 is 6, th 9 times 3 is 27, 3 times 7 is 21. The second one, in terms of numbers, is always 3 times bigger than the one before it, and the x's are going steadily down by 1. So what does that allow me to do? Well, what's the greatest common factor of these two? It's 2x to the fourth. And if I take that out, I've got 1x remaining there, and a 3 remaining there. What about in these guys? Well, I can take out a 9x squared, and I'm left with x plus 3. And in this case, I can take out a 7, and no x's are in common. So that'll go down to x plus 3. So you all see how this can, uh, in the same way that both of these terms had a 5k plus 1, in this one all three of the terms have a uh, x plus 3. So I'm going to grab, again, I'm going to grab these parts over here, and the pluses or minuses would matter a lot. I ended up with the same thing each time. So I'm allowed to write 2x to the fourth plus 9x squared plus 7 
That was me collating all these ones that I've given a dotted underline into one term. And I have an x plus 3. Now, depending upon what kind of assignment you're on, it might be that you need to keep going on this. This is something that, to my mind, looks generally like a quadratic, except it's not a quadratic in x, it's a quadratic in x squared. But for now, I'll leave it like that.